Welcome to See and Free Studio. We all have that thing, that unique, special, and different part of us. I call it the USD. And some of us are still trying to figure out what it is or how to tap into it. To inspire us, I've invited some of my favorite people in the world. They're intriguing, they're authentic, and they're just downright cool. My very first guest is Orlando Ashford. Orlando has been in business for 25 years in both HR and consulting, and most recently as a GM. He is spending a lot of his time these days doing some coaching and advising of different organizations, including Sycamore Partners, where he is an advisor. He's written a book, he's a mentor, and most importantly, he's an advocate, advocate for social justice, race, and for equal opportunity for all. With that, I would love to introduce you to my friend of 17 years. That's how I know him best, Orlando Ashford. Hello. Uh, Orlando, you know, you're now with Sycamore Partners. I'd love for you to tell everybody what you're doing there. And you have some news. I thought I'd let you share that news, uh, your sure. upcoming role. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I've known you a long time. And uh, so I'm excited that you uh, feel like I have some USD that's worthy of sharing uh, with your with your audience. Yeah. But um yeah, I spent the last five and a half years working in the cruise space with Holland America Line, and I left there in June and then uh, joined uh, Sycamore Partners as a strategic advisor. And we've spent the last several months working together, uh, looking at um, industries uh, to get into. And um, my, I guess my news is that most recently we've come to an agreement with uh, Royal Caribbean uh, to uh, acquire uh, Azamara Cruises and I will be serving as the executive chair for Azamara Cruises. And so I've gotten back into the cruise industry and I'm pretty excited about that, particularly given all the change that's happened, not only for the cruise industry, but for so many industries based on what's happened with COVID and the pandemic. So um, pretty, pretty excited about that. So here we are. Well, congratulations. I'm super excited for you. I remember when uh, you were considering a role uh, in the cruise industry and you told me you had never even been on a ship before. <laughs> so for you to be making waves literally in the cruise industry now is pretty fantastic. Um, I have had such an incredible time getting to know you over the years and had the opportunity to work with you. So I think I know what your unique, special and different is, your USD, but would you like to tell us what you think it is? Yeah, um, and so when you ask the question, it's kind of weird when you when you try to think about it. But if I if I think about what people say about me, uh, or or what I think has allowed me to be successful or able to move from career to career, because you you mentioned it, imagine that I, I uh, took over the second oldest cruise line in the world, having never been on a cruise in my life, and so what what allows you to do that, or when I took a role and moved myself and my family to Turkey uh, to, to live there. And so I think um, I have a, an ability to take some risk, um, to believe in myself, um, but being comfortable with, with, with risk. I think one of my other uh, powers is the ability to uh, attract people. And so building uh, cultures or teams or environments where um, different people from different backgrounds feel comfortable showing up as their true authentic self to contribute to a team or a project. And I think that's been one of the things that I've been able to do. And then I think I, I, I just have a, I try to have a lighthearted spirit, uh, personality that, um, allows people to feel comfortable. So we all have important jobs and have important things that we do, but for most of us, it's not rocket science. I have a cousin that actually does rocket science, but um, for most of us, it's not rocket science. And so uh, you try to take it serious, but not too serious. And so those are hopefully things that I bring to the table. Yeah. I mean, and we talk about that being unique, you know, it, it seems like something that we should all bring to the table is making people feel comfortable, recognizing their strengths, uh, and really being truly yourself and you are 100 percent yourself i've you know i've always appreciated your your personality and you bring it to the table every time uh what do you think is tough about doing that for all leaders yeah I, you know <clears throat> i think there's a i don't know perception or kind of an image that people feel like they have to 
portray or exude when they talk about being a leader. And so um, if it's you know, you're trying to pretend or, or lean into something that's not naturally you, then over time uh, it doesn't work. You can you can mask yourself for 45 minutes in an interview or in a short interaction at a cocktail uh, table or event. But if someone's going to work with you over time, your real personality comes out. And so if trying to lead in a way that is not authentic to yourself, I think um, is challenging for people. Um, so for me, I, I decided long ago, this is kind of who I am and how I'm wired. And hopefully this will work uh, for me or work with me for me in that organization or company or, or situation. And if it doesn't, then I'll go do something else. But uh, I, I don't think it works to try to act like somebody else. And you know that because I've, I've been places and it, you know, people accept me and it works for a while. And then if it doesn't work, I say, okay, no problem. I'll go over here. Or, yeah, or, no, or it's or true. I think that's exactly right. And um, I think we don't necessarily put enough emphasis on the importance of being real. <laughs> Just bring in, bringing your whole self to, to the job. Um, you know, can you think of a time when it, when it hit you that that was your unique, special, and different? Uh, was there like a moment where you you just owned it? You th- said, "This is who I am. Uh, this is what I bring to the table, and I'm just going to make it a part of uh, you know my success." Yeah. So um, I don't know if there's one time. It's probably been a serious time. I mean, look, I've I've grown up in a lot of different areas. So I was born in Bangor, Maine. I was the first African-American baby born in the hospital that I was born in. So I was in the paper, um, you know, colored baby born today in St. Joseph's Hospital. So there was news about that. And then, and I've lived in Pennsylvania. I've lived in New Jersey. I've lived in Albany, Georgia. Um, my brother and I integrated uh, a school there where the two first and only two kids of color in this school in the rural South. And so, um, so there was always energy about my difference, um, maybe not always the best energy, but uh, I was forced early on to learn to kind of live with that, lean into it, and then try to create power from that extra attention that I was getting. And so um, so I don't think there was any one thing, but um, you know, over time, I, you know, I developed skills. So when you're in a confrontational situation, Sometimes you have to fight and other times you can use humor uh, and personality to get through it. And so I, I, I think developed a sense of humor, uh, ability to um, kind of pull myself down a bit in situations. And then I also um, had great parents, still have great parents that had instilled a lot of confidence in me, um, a belief in myself. And so a belief that I could do anything. So when we presented with some of the opportunities that were presented to me, um, I would think I was able to do it. You know, when I was presented with an opportunity to, to run a cruise line and I had never been on a cruise ship, I literally said in the interview, if you guys are crazy enough to offer me this job, I'm crazy enough to take it. And I moved to Seattle, moved from the Northeast to Seattle. Uh, I started on December 1st, 2014, and I took my first cruise in life December 5th, 2014 and led that business for over five and a half years and was quite successful in that period. Um, when I made the decision to move to Turkey, you, uh, you were there, we were at, at Coca-Cola. I, w- I was so excited about the opportunity. I kind of accepted the job before I had gone home and talked to my family, um, which I don't recommend. Uh, <laughs> but um, the idea of, uh, of, of living overseas was something that we had talked about. Um, uh, I was presented with an opportunity to you could do Turkey, or if you're not comfortable, we'll send you to London. And I said, no, 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 let's let's do Turkey. That's a bigger stretch. Uh, I'll learn more uh, in that. And so started with Eurasia, and then ultimately was Eurasia and Africa. It was 90 countries, everything from Moscow to Cape Town. It was half the world. Um, and most of those places I hadn't been to, but was excited to go. And they weren't all tourist destinations that we went to. I mean, I was uh, all over, um, you know, would spend time in, in, in the touristy spots, but I spent time in some countries that weren't very touristy. And some of the situations were, were scary, but leaned into that opportunity. So somewhere in there, I, 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 I got it in my head that I could tackle just about anything and would try to do it. Was there any point in time where you had a particular challenge, you know, and you wondered if you could really tackle it. You you questioned whether you could pull through. Uh, are you willing to share that example? 
Yeah, well, no, I, 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 I think you, I, you question all the time. Um, I, you know, when, oh, well, I'll, I'll go back to my last uh, several months at Holland America uh, when the uh, COVID broke out. And some of you may remember um, there was a, a princess ship in Japan that had a number of cases uh, of COVID on that ship. Holland America had a ship in the vicinity. People weren't sure if, if that ship um, had COVID cases. So all of the ports in that part of the world closed to my ship. And I, I had people that were having a very nice time, did not realize they were stranded on a ship because we were trying to figure out how to uh, disembark those folks so we could fly them home. I'll make a long story short, but ultimately uh, Cambodia agreed to take the ship uh, and we were gracious. Uh, we made a beeline, got the ship over there started getting people um, off the ship. And then halfway through that process, the those other countries that had closed their ports to us then closed their airports to us. And so I had you know 600 people stuck in a hotel in Phnom Penh in the capital. And I had another thousand or so uh, stuck on the ship at the port and not really clear on how to get them home. So what was the answer? Um, so myself and four or five of my team members jumped on a flight flew to Cambodia. I didn't know if I was going for three days, three weeks or three months. This is very early on in the uh, pandemic and didn't really know much about the, the, the virus itself. Actually knowing what I know now, probably wouldn't, wouldn't have gotten on that flight because um, I was interacting with thousands of people uh, and not knowing what the virus was gonna do, what it would be like. So when you're on that flight, think about that. I'm on that flight, making my way there trying to figure out how I'm going to get almost 2,000 people home uh, of a virus that's playing out that we really don't know how it works and what kind of danger I'm putting myself in. Um, and so there's a lot of doubt. But I also, at the same time, knew I had to figure it out. Um, one of the things I would say to my team, this is going to have to resolve. Uh, people aren't going to be stuck on a ship or stuck in this hotel forever. It's going to have to resolve. It's our job to allow it to resolve in a way that works in our favor or that works in a, in a good way. Now, let's figure it out. And that that's where the whole um, creating an environment to allow people to be their best self. Because um, the only way I, you can do something like that is to have other people to help you. <clears throat> I have a few good ideas, but I don't have them all. So other people have to help me. And, and my belief is that if a group of people attacks a problem, we can figure out the problem and figure out the right answer. I believe that. So I, I hold on to that even in situations where I'm, quite frankly, terrified. I was, that, was a, that, was, that was a scary one. I had no idea what was going to happen. Yeah, I remember that. And I, I remember seeing clippings of you in the newspaper uh, from friends of mine that live in Asia. Uh, and... Uh, I was super impressed with how well you handled that. And just to hear you say, I, I leaned on people and the strengths of the people around me and my team. Uh, that's you. That's you in a nutshell. Um, and I think that speaks volumes to your unique, special, and different. Um, and, and thank you, by the way, for getting those 2,000 people home <laughs> safely. <laughs> if you haven't been thanked already. Yeah, no, I, I got a few. <laughs> that's good, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, this is a point in the interview where I want to I just uh, have a thing I want to do called random questions. And to do that, uh, you have to pick between 1 and 25, and we'll see what question you pick. And I'd love for you to answer okay. it. Sure. So my, 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 my number in high school was 24. So we'll go with 24. 24. All right. Okay. What's one thing that if you don't have makes it harder to free your unique, special, and different? Oh, um, yeah, that's it. You know, when I, when, anytime I move to a place, and I, we've moved a number of times, um, so once you get the house fi figured out and then school for the kids figured out, then the very next thing uh, for me to figure out is a golf course. And so um, that is important to me. That's the one place when I can, I go and I literally can shut down, um, shut other things out. And for those, you know, four, four hours, four or five hours, um, just enjoy being outdoors, enjoy 
you know, smack talking with my friends, enjoy trying to figure out how to be a better golfer, which I've been doing, you know, trying to do a long time. Um, but that's an important, uh, I think, release for me. And so um, I hadn't thought about it, but I, I, that's sort of the order. Hey, where are we going to live? Okay, well, make, make sure we got good schools for the kids. And then, boom, where am I going to play golf? Because I, 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 that'll be an important outlet for me. Yeah, and I, I, I do know that about you as well <laughs> in your collection of golf shoes. <laughs> So it's impressive. Yes. <laughs> it's very impressive. <laughs> um, uh, you know, now that you're you're at the stage you are, you're about to embark on this new opportunity. Um, you know, is there any advice th- uh, that you've been given or that you give other people that you're going to take take with you into this next adventure? Yeah, <clears throat> you know, so you know, m- moving from being the 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 person. Um, to the advice, it's interesting how my career has kind of played out. I started my career as a consultant. Then I was, um, you know, in HR, in big roles in HR. And so you were the point person uh, in HR. And then I was a, a, you know, a GM. You know, I was president of two different businesses. And so you're sort of the person and the one that's accountable for making the decisions and delivering the results. And now I'm in back in an advisor role. Right. So I'm serving as a strategic advisor to a private equity firm. I'm on a number of boards advising. And even with this acquisition of, of, of Azamara Cruises, I'm an executive chairman. And so I will be involved, but I'm not the operator. Uh, I'll, I'm an influencer. Uh, I'll, I'll inspire. I'll have some certain duties that I'll um, engage in, but I'm not the, the day-to-day operator. And so that's that's a shift. I, I've been... I've been you know, Mr. Action for a number of years, and so I still have that energy, interest, desire at times, but I have to temper it um, because being you know, governance is different than operating. Um, so, so I think giving myself permission to enjoy that role because it, there's pressure, but it's not the same pressure as being the operator. You know, when, when you're the operator, you're the one that has to get on the plane and go to Cambodia when your people are in trouble. When you're on the board, you give them advice and wish them well, um, which is different because my natural MO would be to get up and go too, but that's not, that wouldn't necessarily be my job in the roles that I'm in today, if that makes sense. So giving myself permission to um, show up that way and, and, and enjoy that, that, that aspect of how I get to work today versus how I've worked maybe for the last 20 some years. Well, and that's, I think you'll do a fine job. Uh, And I know there's two young men in your life uh, who you advise on on a very regular basis, uh, your sons. Are there any pieces of guidance that you would give them to help them find their their unique, special, and different? And are you starting to see it now? Yeah, 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 they they have it, um, which is is fun to see. Uh, So I've tried to replicate some of the things that my parents did for me, uh, we've tried to do uh, for, for, for our children. And so, um, you know, look, I've got two um, charismatic uh, young men. Um, when I was growing up, my dad worked for the government for 33 years. And so when I was thinking about careers and stuff. My dad said, you know, you want to give yourself optionality. So you don't want to work in a government because there's only one government. You want to work in corporate America. That's where the money is, and you'll have more options and opportunities, and so that's what I've done. Um, and had a pretty good run, and so when I talk to my children, I say, "Look, you guys don't want to do corporate because there's so many things to navigate and things you have to do and manage and politics. You want to run your own business. You want to be an entrepreneur, free yourself up." And so that's kind of been my message to them. And so I've got one that's a junior in college and one that's a freshman in high school, but um, both of them are definitely have an eye towards building something, um, owning their own space, being an entrepreneur. Uh, and so I'm, I'm excited to see what they're going to end up doing. There's just, there's so many uh, platforms and things that are uh, of need that could be not only impactful, but also lucrative. And so they could, um, make a difference for others and make a difference for themselves at the same time. So I've just encouraged them to take those risks. They're in a position where they're able to do that. Um, have confidence in themselves, um, know what you know, but also know what you don't know and create your network. You're in these great schools and you're meeting all these great people. 
will latch on to some of them and get a, a coalition of um, people, a group of kids or a group of young folks and come up with an idea and go take a risk and see, see, what, uh, see what you can build or what you can do. Um, so uh, they're in great positions. I'm excited for them. I think there's going to be great opportunity, and uh, and you've given them a, a great uh, upbringing to to get them started. And in the that. spirit of that, you know, another organization I, that you support uh, is meant to also bring out the best in, in young people. The Positive Coaching Alliance. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about the organization, and I'd love for our viewers to be able to not only learn about them but also contribute to the cause. Yeah, I, I appreciate that opportunity. Yeah, the Positive Coaching Alliance um, is an organization that's really focused on getting back to the original roots um, behind youth sports. And so what you have going on today is that young people are quitting sports at an alarming rate around the age of 13, 14. And a lot of it is just because um, overbearing coaches, overbearing parents, over, overbearing athletes, um, uh, and, and, and people have gotten away from the intentions behind sports, exercise, leadership, development. Um, not every kid is going to go pro. In fact, very few are. Um, not every kid is going to play big time college athletics. In fact, very few are. Um, but a lot of these youth programs are just drilling this concept that they're all going to go pro and that uh, you have to give everything up and uh, and, and the way that they're coaching these young people, um, it's, it's uh, disheartening. I have, both my sons are athletes, and so this came about from personal experience. We had some pretty negative experiences with some coaches um, that uh, you know my wife and I had to lean in on to uh, try to help manage uh, our, our, our young people through that situation. And so when I came across the Positive Coaching Alliance, I helped start the, um, the chapter here in Seattle and so was, uh, was proud to do that. And it actually even changed my own relationship with my own children because um, some of the things I didn't think I was overbearing, but there were still things that I was doing. You know, the worst when they surveyed professional athletes, Olympic athletes, college athletes, and they said, what's the best that you like about sports? But when they talked about what's the worst thing about sports, it wasn't running laps or two a days or anything else. They said it was the half hour drive home with their parents after the game. And when I reflected on the dynamic of what I was doing as a parent, um, I was I was contributing to some of that. So I, I played basketball. My son played basketball. And during that half hour drive home, you know, I'd go back through the game and uh, Atlanta, you shouldn't have done this. You did this. You did this. What about this? I saw this in the third quarter. You should have done this. And uh, uh, and after getting exposed to the positive coaching alliance, I stopped and changed from being a part-time coach to just being a dad and being a cheerleader. And so I've been able to do a better job of that with my younger son. And I've tried to fix that with my older son. My older son still plays sports. He's playing in college. So gave me another, another chance at that. But um, I think the message of the Positive Coaching Alliance is a powerful one. And, uh, and so I'm happy to support it. Well, yes, I think it sounds wonderful. I wish I had had it uh, when I was the soccer mom. <laughs> I needed an intervention or two uh, to remember to be a parent, a good one. Uh, and I, I want to make sure that everybody knows that you can donate uh, directly to the Positive Coaching Alliance and go ahead and scan the code at the bottom of the screen. We'll show it again in a little bit. But Orlando, I want to thank you immensely for doing this with me. Uh, this is a a bit out of my comfort zone to do see and free studio and, and uh, be as visible uh, as I am in this uh, moment. But I do it because I love spotlighting people like you uh, and talking about all the wonderful things that you do, but most importantly, who you are. So thank you for being you. Thank you for being my friend. And thank you for being my first guest. No problem. I am. I'm honored that uh, I got a chance to do this. I'm proud of you for uh, stepping out because I do know this isn't your your MO. Uh, you like to be kind of behind the camera, but putting yourself in front of the camera to uh, to do some good things, I think it's it's, uh, it's commendable and worthy, and I'm appreciative of you for, uh, for doing this. So thanks for having me on. Thank you. I, I hope you have a great next adventure, and I will definitely be seeing you soon. All right. Take care. Thanks for visiting us at Sea and Free Studio. 
please come visit us at seeandfreestudio.com. You can visit us on YouTube or LinkedIn. Hit subscribe. We'd like to see you over and over again. Make sure to donate to the Positive Coaching Alliance, and we'll see you next time.